Okay, I was going to talk a little bit more on the default constructor, but I really don't think it's, it's that important to make another video just to show you just a little bit of something else. I'll add it on as an, an add-on or an extension when I get around to it or if there's enough requests for it, but I want to move on to something more important. So uh, let me delete all this and let's start off out with just one box, box A. We already know how to change the value oops, of one of the variables assigned to it. It's just another variable. That's all it is. It's just a variable. You, we learned this several times. So I can spell it right. We've seen this plenty of times. I like to repeat things as you guys already know if you already watched my last video because it reinforces it over and over and over so it's important. You guys can remember stuff. But now we're going to learn about public and private keywords here. Now let me finish this up here. So this is C out a dot length. Let's access this length here. So this is something we've probably seen in lesson one or two, where we learn how to set a value equal to something, and we output it to the screen. Let's see what we get. We should get six, hopefully. All right, we got six. We we print out the value six to the screen. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we're going to learn the new keywords public and private. This is just an introduction here. Okay, so I'm going to backspace here because I just like to have it over here. And uh, when I finish up typing this, I'll begin to explain it. Okay. So notice I put a I spelled out the word private. It, it's a keyword because it lights up in blue. If it lights up in blue, it means it's a keyword. So public is a keyword, private is a keyword. Notice I used a colon. See the colons after that? What this means is that height, width, length, label is private variables. And volume and SA are a public variables or functions. In this case, they all happen to be functions. Okay? And the constructors, also public. So what does that even mean? Alright, <clears throat> so let's look at this private variable here. Alright, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to run this. They were build errors. What? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. There are build errors. I'm going to hit no. This is running the last successful version. This is not a successful version. There is errors here. Why is there an error here? Any variable or function that is considered private, we cannot change the values of those through the dot operator. Okay? Let me delete this here. and I want to make this clear. I cannot use the dot operator on any on any uh, private variable here. Let me delete this private keyword. Now let's look what happens. Let me scroll down and let me press play. In this case it works. It's a zero. It plays zero. It's the default value of zero here. But when I add private to this here. I cannot access those. Does that make sense? We cannot use the dot operators on any function that is private here. So for instance here, let me make this 3, 4, and 5. We're going to make this very, very clear. I'm going to make this 3. I like to give them different values so you can see which ones are going to be changing, which ones are. Alright, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Now let me make this private again. Now if I delete this private keyword, if I'm using a struct, 
it's automatically assumed to be public. If I'm if I'm not using if I'm using struct, it's automatically assumed to be public. So these are all public here. I really don't need this public at all in this situation here. So right now, I can use it because I don't have private. I didn't make them private. Now, when I put private here, these variables are private here. So let me explain to you how this works. Uh, when I, as soon as I write the word private in a colon here, everything is going to be private until it runs into the word public. Then after that, everything's going to be public until it runs down to the word private or it ends out of this struct here. So for now, we're only going to be using private and public in the struct stuff, okay? When we use structs or classes here. Okay. I'll class, you can also use the word keyword class and it'll work. It's almost, it's the same thing as a struct. Almost. We'll get into that in the next video or two. The difference between struct and class. There is almost no difference at all. Okay. So right now, I cannot use this a length. Like, we cannot change the values of a length. We cannot change the values of private variables. So just understand that. Let me see where I'm at. We're at six minutes, okay. We cannot change those values here. We cannot even, we can't even print them out to the screen. We cannot use any private variables from another function. Okay. So how do we change these variables here? So listen very carefully. Now, I'm going to make new functions. Okay? I'm going to leave the default constructor just down below so it's separate from everything else. I'm going to make a new function next called, it's going to be a double. And I'm going to call it get under dash height. And it takes no parameters. All it is going to do return only the functions in here. These are the only functions. Look inside here. Right? See this here? And stride the struct here. These functions that are inside the struct scope are the only ones that are allowed to use the private variables because they are only being allowed to use by this function here, the struct. They're only allowed to be used inside the struct box. So no other function, not even the main function, can use those variables with the dot operator. The public functions can be called by any function. See here, I can call the area. I can use volume. I can call the volume function because it's a public variable. It's a public function. Okay. Let me finish up where I was at. All this is going to do is return the height here. Now I can um, go down. See here, if I, uh, if I run this here, I'll get zero, zero, three times, or uh, not zero, sixty. Because this function here is a public function and they can use those. Actually, let me use a, ch I'm going to call this a change height. I want to change the height and it's going to take in a parameter. Double. It's going to take a double, I'm going to call it x. And this is just going to set. This is going to set height equal to the x value. Next, actually, I'm going to make this void since I'm switching up on you. And there's going to be no return type on the void here. All right, and I'm going to make a new function. I should have kept that one called get.
And again, I should have prepared for this, but... What's going on here? Yeah, it needs a double. That's why. It doesn't know what to return, so it's void. Uh, okay. Looks a little better. Alright. So I added... Here's my two new functions. I can change the height, and I can get height. So look, I cannot directly output height here because it's a private variable. It's private. We cannot use it. But I can use any public function from this guy here. So using this public function here, I can return get height. Because all it does is just return the value height, but it's a public function so I can use it in the main loop. So let's see. I'm going to say get height. And let me run this here. And it returns the three. Okay. So understand that I cannot use these private variables. Let me go a little bit more. I can only use them for uh, public types here. I'm going to stop here for a second, but we got to you got to watch the next video to understand what's going on. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it off here. This is going to be to be continued. This same exact conversation is going to be continued. Okay, so I'll see you in a second.